Gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining Ryan Brooker's technical webinar sessions. Uh, this uh, session is pretty much to uh, provide an insight in terms of enhancing and extending your Epigo ERP value uh, to business using the right ancillary softwares. Many a times what happens is, uh, uh, yeah, just before we start the webinar, a basic uh, couple of things to be um, um, announced. Um, we would be recording this webinar uh, for our internal compliance purpose and also uh, uh, feel free to post your questions uh, through the question window you see on the right hand side of the uh, webinar uh, window. We would take these questions once the presentation is over at the end of the session. Thank you very much for uh, joining today's session. Uh, myself, I'm Srikant. I've been working in IT industry for uh, more than uh, uh, two decades, uh, largely focusing on IT delivery, managing center of excellence, and building uh, large delivery teams, uh, largely driven by, driven by strategy IT transformations. Currently, I've been building and managing a partner ecosystem for Reinbrucker, through which we can uh, provide cutting edge solutions to our esteemed um, customers in this region. So far, uh, we have uh, Indicted nearly six partners and uh, six more are in the process uh, and are totaling to 12 partners in the middle of this region. We would be providing Epicore ERP, business intelligence, and Maryland as a solution, a uh, strategic procurement solution through these channels. And our partners would be empowered to successfully transform the business to our end customers. I would give you an overview of uh, Brian Bruca at a glance. Um, Ryan Bruca is a Epicor partner, a global uh, uh, platinum partner, two times winner of International Partner of the Year with a strong footprint in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. We have immense experience and expertise in providing Epicor implementation and uh, support services to clients globally for past seven years. Our team of experts can deliver custom solutions and uh, offerings to address the need of the business on multiple verticals, including automotive systems, oil and gas and energy, discrete manufacturing, pharma and life sciences, engineering and construction, retail, distribution, and trading. Uh, we have executed projects in 26 countries and are proud to be serving our happy customers across these locations. Ryan Brooker, our name and our company logo reflect our vision, passion, and our aspiration to be the respected player in the mid-market and uh, to be the go-to company for IT and DRP solutions in continental Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. The six dots represent six countries that the river Rhine flows through. The seventh dot represents the bridge, connectivity, and means to overcome barriers. We are constantly focused on mid-market with a strong multicultural and multilingual team that understands your regional needs. We are organized by means of four different pillars in terms of solution delivery. Uh, pillar number one is Epicor on-premise and cloud, where we provide our solution through our uh, network of partners. We are an authorized Epicor distributor for the region. We provide implementation rollout and support through this pillar on the demand, on the Epicor ERP demand space. The second pillar being our product development and the vision to deliver a strategic uh, sourcing platform. We provide this through a platform called Merlin, which is used for strategic sourcing. Third is Expensa, which is a cloud-based expense management solution. So we provide Merlin and Expensa on over the cloud. This is our own products. The third pillar being uh, extended enterprise around IT. We provide uh, Microsoft technology-based solution. We are authorized Microsoft Gold Partner, and we provide solutions in the space of IoT, cloud, mobile, and also enterprise business intelligence. The fourth pillar, we provide consulting and advisory. Uh, we provide portfolio rationalization services, and also help large organization to set up their global supply chain platform and manufacturing platform. We provide consulting and advisory in the fourth leg. That's how we are organized. Today's speaker, Nitish Ramanathan, he is a solution architect of Brian Bruca, comes with a decade of experience in the space of Epicor and Microsoft technology. 
He has deep expertise in technical consulting. He has profound knowledge of implementation and optimization of Epigor ERP. He has strong experience in identifying relevant solutions over the enterprise space, and he comes with a lot of support and troubleshooting experience, comes with a plethora of experience on the integration platforms and ancillary softwares. And he is going to be talking about uh, today's entire ancillary software still. Um, the, the agenda basically today is to give you an introduction of these ancillary softwares um, in a most useful manner because many a times the 11th mile entry completes, the 11th hour implementation completes, and the ancillary softwares are not really leveraged by the implementation team and even the customer and uh, somehow they get tired in the last lag of implementation. And how you can really leverage these tools are the uh, discussion point that's going to happen today. We would uh, pick up the APR print routing first. We would discuss Epigor business intelligence second. We would discuss Epigor IoT as a third item. We would also discuss about um, Epigor virtual agent, which is the most artificial intelligence based system using natural language processing, how it leverages uh, the platform would be discussed. And the whole integration, how is it made possible to you by means of the service oriented architecture would be discussed. And we would uh, be waiting for your questions. We'll be happy to take up these questions once this session is over. So I encourage all of you to post your questions. We would pick up those questions once the uh, session is over. Now, uh, this is over to you, Nitish. Please take this forward. Thank you, Sri. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nitish. Uh, welcome to the webinar on Enhance Next and the Epic or ERP's value to the business uh, with Ride Ancillary Software. It's always exciting to back to our webinar days. It's my uh, second webinar on the season, and we thought, let's do this live um, so that at least I get a feeling that I'm talking to multiple people here. Yeah. I'm pretty much excited in this subject because um, I always like to work with those special tools and features uh, which supports and enhance the experience of um, um, using uh, the ERP as a total. So it helps you to make your lives easier, essentially. Um, I recommend you taking notes of the tools and features which we discuss in the webinar so that you can reach out to us in case of having any questions or queries or um, how these tools and features can help you which I believe you will basically discover yourself once the webinar is over. All right, uh, I've chosen some of the Epicor add-ons and uh, features and ancillary softwares out of um, many um, because, uh, because majorly the ease of use, and I felt most of them are industry independent um, and it can potentially help you to enhance the experience of using uh, the product itself. All right. Let's get started then. Uh, have you uh, ever thought of these? Um, your business runs with multiple um, customers in several regions, um, and you can, you can how can you automatically identify the format of reports to choose according to certain criteria? Uh, how will you generate targeted documents for the customer, suppliers, or for an internal user? Or how can you automatically send a purchase order to your suppliers? Uh, for example, if you're an account manager. And you would like to review the AR invoices before you send them to the customers, uh, customers contact maybe. Uh, or how will you choose a multiple uh, variable recipient and send them the document? If you have one or all of these questions in the mind, uh, the solution is advanced from routing or simply call it as an APR. Across the um, entire business, there is a daily need to generate reports, um, send information and, and generate and store the business artifacts. Uh, creating, personalizing, and routing um, business documents and reports for uh, various um, internal and external individuals and meeting their unique need um, for delivery, depth of information, and dissert format can be a challenge, especially if you have to rely upon disparate applications outside of your Epic or ERP. Your customers, uh, suppliers, and internal users all have different reporting and document requirements. Some may need documents emailed as an attachment or deposited into a designated folder in an FTP source, maybe. Others may still need a printed copies. Information needs vary from customer to supplier, as well as between the internal roles as well. 
Now, providing important business documents and reports to the right people at the right time with the right information is complex enough without having to manage a non-integrated third-party application. Now we can have a robot reporting functions for document distribution via printing and email attachments built right into your ERP system with the Epicor Advanced Print Routing. Now we can have report, reporting functions as well as an APR offers built-in um, easy to use tools to quickly create, um, route, and format your reports according to the various requirements of the internal and external recipients. Uh, you can send order confirmations or invoices to the customers uh, and, uh, and generate and submit required financial reports uh, or deliver even the part reports or pick lists to your operational personals. With APR, your organization can reduce reporting errors, which is important, improve customer satisfaction, and eliminate the hassle of supporting additional applications. You benefit uh, from an integrated print management system um, and, and probably you know, a document distribution system. Of course, it has a good benefits. First one is essentially the cost and time saving. The functionality is built right into the um, ERP system. How, how brilliant is that? Uh, so you simply use your software and hardware or probably eliminate those informations uh, by just not giving an expense to, to manage a third party um, print management tool. Of course, ease of use, it's important. A modern graphical workflow builder within the ERP solution allows you to quickly and easily design role for the for breaking or filtering and, and assigning maybe an alternate report styles. Now, the biggest part is the flexibility and improved efficiency. Generate report once and render multiple outputs and formats based on audience, uh, business requirements, and other factors. All individual report run can be broken into multiple reports, uh, each with different report styles and formats applied. And then deliver to one or more email address, or probably you can print them. So this is an overall package for you. By designing routing rules that addresses various needs unique to your company and organization, you will generate targeted documents for customers, suppliers, and internal users. Well, um, please note that APR is um, you know, available only on, um, probably available only after 10.1 version. Uh, please also note that APR is not backwardly compatible with the older version of Epicor. If you require a document scanning or document repository, you should consider Docstar plus APR. APR complements Docstar in, in attaching the documents directly to the Docstar itself and bring the supplementary attachments from the Docstar and send us an email. How cool is that? If you want to know more about the Docstar, feel free to subscribe to our Ryan Brooker channel in the YouTube. There's a brilliant webinar uh, that explains how Docstar can help in enterprise content management. All right, so if you're looking for a similar feature, it's time for you to take your pen and paper to note down the name. It's APR or Advanced Print Routing. Let's talk about the next subject. Of course, um, Epicor BI and Analytical Product Suites. BI and analytics is not a new concept in the industry, but recent advancements made it a topic that we all have to revisit. Epicor business intelligence and analytical product suits help our ERP customers answer the most relevant business related questions. What is happening and what happened? Why did it happen and what will happen? Because apparently most of the questions um, can be answered easily uh, if you are using an ERP. Um, you know, the core product is included with an embedded in the platform that are highly functioning, such as dashboards and drill down, um, uh, so normal dashboards like your part tracker or probably, you know, uh, this AWS tracker, et cetera. And of course, the brand new visualization product, Epicor Data Discovery. We'll talk about that EDD later. However, these particular products primarily answer what is happening and what happened. Let's do a closer look on these tools and products now. 
The product listed, what you're currently seeing on the screen, the product listed on the chart below comprise the EPCOR, ERP, BI, and analytical product suites. The dollar indicates the products are sold as an add-on, obviously. As we move up and to the right, the value and the analytical sophistication that the product return increases. Some example of the high value return include the ability to uh, analyze huge amount of data, the ability to apply statistical analysis for business decisions and ability to um, self-serve without the assistance of an IT department. It can be debated, obviously, that some of these products actually span categories, but they're placed where we believe their focuses and strengths are. Staying on the same slide, to debrief on the tools which you are using, such as operational reports, creating a BAQ, or creating an SSRS report, can help you understand what is happening. Moving on to the next ahead, this phase is called descriptive analysis or descriptive analytics. Tools such as Epoch or Data Discovery, which we'll talk about later, and Executive dashboard that comes up with a native application and Epicor tools such as Epicor Excel Connect or in fact a pilot BAQ will help you understand what has happened. When you look into the diagnostic analysis, that's the next step, tools such as Epicor Data Analytics or, uh, or, or Financial Planner plays a major role to help you understand why is it happened. When you look into furthermore, the complicated process is to do the predictive analysis or predictive analytics, I would say. Epicor do consist of tools in this area as well. Well, smart forecast or smart cloud products, such as Epicor Smart Demand Planner. I'll take a simple example. Demand Planner provides cloud-based statistical forecasting that automatically select the right forecast model for each item accounting for trend, seasonality, and promotion, even driven demand. Once the baseline is forecast, or for the baseline for the forecast is actually produced, it is available for collaborative review and consensus planning by authorized stakeholders. Forecast accuracy can be measured to ensure the uh, possible forecast delivery to the business at both um, aggregated and maybe an item mix level. All right, let's look into the data scale as defined. Advancements have been made in easily and inexpensive uh, storing, uh, updating, accessing, um, analyzing huge amount of data. The chart which you're currently seeing, the following chart will help you understand where the Epicor BI and analytic products fit on the data scale. Many of the products near the bottom of the y-axis pull their data directly from the Epicor ERP production system. BI and analytical products for the Epicor ERP systems are arranged on the chart below to indicate in most cases that the ability to do, to do more quickly and easily analyze a larger amount of uh, data that to go up to the right. Well, like, the definition that actually explains there, a live, meaning the queries are against the Epicor ERP production database. And non-live are essentially uh, are the things which is copied into a separate database or, uh, or probably on demand, which is something like your data warehousing, like the EDA or analytical tools. Large set of data used enterprise level, which is your data warehouse. Or data mart, maybe that's a subset of the data used by the department. So if you look into the representation, you can see that the most of the tools in the operational and descriptive analytics is running on the direct Epicor DB. However, if the sophistication goes, it recommends to run on a data warehouse or data mark for the obvious reasons, I believe. There are, in fact, some new cool features that came with the latest versions of Epicor that actually let you run your BAQs even on the read-only databases. Sounds interesting, isn't it? Well, talking about the interesting things or interesting subjects, we have to talk about this. I absolutely love it. Epicor Data Discovery. Next slide, please. 
Apricor Data Discovery is a data visualization uh, tool for Epicor ERP. With EDD, you can use your natural visual abilities to quickly sort areas of interest in real time production data that you might otherwise uh, miss just by uh, looking in at the rows and columns that you are basically doing a BI on. EDD is driven, or I call this EDD, it's Epicor Data Discovery. So EDD is driven by a real-time Epicor ERP data, and EDD complements Epicor Data Analytics. EDD visualizes a short-term up to a second enterprise data, whereas obviously EDA provides a longer-term data exploration running in the data warehouse. Built in the new Epicor Kinetic design system for the clean, uh, modern, intuitive, and streamlined user experience, EDD is accessible via multiple channels such as smart client, web browsers, tablets, and modern smartphones. The application is designed to work well um, on low power touch devices um, uh, as it goes on, like it works absolutely fine also with the powerful desktop in a larger screen real estate. EDD automatically adjusts its layout and behavior uh, to the browser and device accessing it. We call it as responsive, obviously. Resizable data cards can be animated to cycle through multiple values, such as um, uh, stock ticker or providing a live feed of the production data. A full assortment of 30 plus matrices across five roles are included with EDD. That's brilliant, isn't it? These provide greater starting point for users to explore in this data discovery, uh, view or create new matrices. However, we have a customer running on absolutely brilliant KPI and charts. I remember a conversation with an IT manager, uh, which we implemented recently of the EDDs, and he coded, our CEO loved his matrices. Of course, we spent uh, a lot of time to study the process from the customer end to produce them the best fit visualization for multiple roads. That paid off. That's brilliant. A typical example for the EDD can be, you can create widgets uh, on a, probably on a sales module, I would say. And looking for um, a sale of a part or a product groups. You can see that some of the products have consistently low sales and might be a good candidate for reducing the sales effort for those product line or increase efforts to concentrate on the product line, which is selling as hot cake. A typical example, or again, we, we could take that as, you know, want to see a ratio of a jobs with scrap rework non-conformance versus no scrap uh, rework or non-conformance. I mean, no rework or non-reconformance. That gets you better insight in terms of it, isn't it? Or you need to be able to quickly review in KPI, the total count and the amount of all uh, overdue of an AR invoice, for example. You also need to be able to drill down in the KPI and see all of the customers uh, that have invoices passed to you and what the total amount of overdue uh, looks like. All right, well, if you're looking for some of these items, then the answer is Epicor Data Discovery. In fact, you can also create a EDD dashboards, a collection of several views that enables you to compare a variety of data. Simultaneously, um, or, or sort of you could visualize between multiple uh, roles. If you have a set of views that you use daily, you can create a dashboard that displays all the views at once, rather than navigate to a separate views. And that's brilliant part of the dashboards. And of course they are secure and comply with the user security settings and restrictions. That adds up a bigger value, isn't it? Because you can let the people to see what they're supposed to see, or essentially the fact that, uh, you know, they want to basically create security for certain items. We, 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 the security in Epicor itself is a bigger subject, obviously. You have got a lot of securities available. Um, starting from your menu to the field, in fact, uh, and to the service to the newly coming items, which I'll, which I'll probably take an opportunity to talk later. 
Well, if you're looking for a platform like that, it's obviously take your pen and paper, call this Epicor Data Discovery. Also, the cool part of EDD can accommodate the Epicor IoT widgets. We cannot miss the elephant in the room, isn't it? That leads to my next slide, obviously, the Epicor IoT. Okay, this is really a huge topic of discussions, and we will hopefully come back with a session separately focusing on the IoT and Epicor. However, I just wanted to touch up this point because I cannot, you know, talking about the ancillary softwares and uh, the way the opportunity to work inside the Epicor is humongous at this point. Internet of Things is the network of physical objects that contains embedded technology to communicate and sense or interact with their internal states or the external environment. Since the demand for IoT is increasing exponentially, especially with the availability of IoT services in the cloud, obviously, more powerful computing and plentiful storage space for the massive amount of data than IoT requires. The Internet of Things makes uh, people, manufacturers, for example, to connect their systems, sensors, machines, and people like never before. Now, Epicor ERP users can more uh, easily capitalize on this in interestingly essential capability with Epicor IoT. Epicor IoT leverages the power of Microsoft Azure uh, IoT Hub with the context and in-depth data of Epicor ERP. With Epicor IoT, you even get more intelligent insight to the operations and day-to-day uh, -day activities of your enterprise. Now, looking at the benefits of this, it, increasing the customer satisfaction and efficiency, and of course, the lower cost. Gain insight into the um, user patterns and handling of products from customers. Uh, predict issues and reduce inventory by tracking uh, materials, equipment, products as it moves through the supply chain. Epicor IoT can monitor equipment, assets, sensors from Epicor both on uh, cloud and on-premises deployments and capture their corresponding IoT data such as pressure, temperatures, maybe fluid levels, etc. Epicor ERP offers a centralized IoT platform for production-related data, which enables you to review and monitor site equipment using fully configurable KPIs um, in Epicor data discovery. You can see at a glance, for example, the area of the site where most downtimes or lower utilization was. This way, issues can be probably actioned on or before they lead into the production deficiency in you know, efficiency recreation. Moving on to the next slide, there are two primary features in Epicor IoT. Okay, so to talk about that, we need to understand what kind of roles you have in Epicor IoT in, inside the Epicor. You can either have an IoT administrator or you can also have an IoT sort of, you know, the viewer or the person who is only wanted to consume the data uh, produced by the KPIs which we have. Now, Epicor IoT monitors the data stream for each sensor. The IoT administrator has configured to receive the data from the Azure IoT Hub. This is a brilliant part. IoT administrator configures the devices to connect to the IoT, which obviously happens. IoT administrators can configure rules and threshold that defines anomaly detection. How cool is that? IoT administrator configures because without getting into the too much of coding part or doing that sort of thing, it's absolutely brilliant. IoT administrator configures BPM to react to it. That is more brilliant. Be triggered by the anomaly detection. Um, a simple example, I could take a simple example of BPM output sending to a maintenance suggestion to the uh, maintenance department that given performance anomalies detected. And IoT data from an IoT hub can be visualized using EDD IoT visualization widgets, as I've just been explaining before. It can have capability to, um, you know, bring the EDD uh, IoT widgets into the Kinetic MES or um, to the active homepage. And that's again a brilliant part of it. An administrator can add EDD widgets um, or visualization widgets uh, to the user's uh, access homepage or as I say, Kinetic MES software interface. Separate dashboard tabs can be also made by leveraging the active homepage, a new pad technology or whatsoever, and then you get in the Kinetic MES software also. 
a normal or anomalous state of the monitor data can be indicated in the visualization independent of you either have to you know act or maybe you don't have to act maybe you only wanted to see what's actually happening well let's move on to the next slide iot's workflow to give you a brief on how the workflow executes you can monitor equipment asset environmental factors um, inventory locations and their corresponding iot data even some data such as uh, sensors and machine telemetry uh, flow into the azure hub that's what it happens initially from there the data propagates to the iot module of your epicor erp solution epicor iot has an advanced rule-based engine uh, that can detect patterns and raise alerts and notify uh, and propagate the data back to the Epicor. And in fact, it can trigger the business process changes like raising the maintenance suggestions when uh, equipment degradation is detected. I will connect this part when I'm on the next subject, obviously. I would love to sh show my lab in this area, but I think it's a good to park at this point and we'll take a dedicated session so that we hopefully, um, you know, uh, explain it much more deeper than just uh, showcase a bit of it. Well, talking of the bigger terminologies, what did I miss? Well, Epicor Virtual Agent as the screen says. Epicor Virtual Agent is intelligence personified. An artificial intelligence a tool for Epicor ERP systems, it is context aware, natural language processing, allows users to interact with the EWA, or you can call her as Eva, that's what Epicor markets her as. Just like they would do with the other colleagues, either by you can um, do by talking or you can do by texting, exactly like what you used to use it with your um, Apple's intelligence like Siri or Google Assistant with Androids. This makes the breadth and, and width of the industry specific functionality and information available inside the system directly accessible uh, to the larger audience, boosting productivity, efficiency, and giving your company an improved return on ERP investment. But that's just one fact of EVA. More than just a chatbot, EVA returns richly formatted information with multiple button choices for the suggest and next action. That's brilliant, isn't it? You get an opportunity to choose between the information what you're supposed to do. Evo is powered by part of Microsoft Azure AI services, an affordable cloud solution that makes AI and cognitive technologies accessible and scalable for the companies of all sizes. For Epicor users, the power of AI cannot be understated. Today's digital economy is influencing and growing demand for the customers, B2B buyers, the prompt, personalized services, and rapid order fulfillment. Sometimes people call it as probably an Amazon fact. So keep up companies are increasingly turning uh, to an AI and cognitive technologies. Evolve solves problem today and lays a strong foundation for intelligent technologies that integrate with the Epicor systems. Let me show you a conversation I had with Eva. It's good to be greeted. That's what she does. She greets, isn't it so nice? Now, if you look into my conversation, obviously, I started by setting a context, customer Addison. And if I basically say that, Eva understand the fact it's the customer and she showed me the details of the customer Addison. Then I actually, you could use all the phone functionalities like calling it or whatsoever. And then I asked her, show me the junction plug. Of course, there's a reason when I do that, show me the junction plug, it's because I just wanted to uh, get the part information. So there's a data tag involved with that show me junction plug part. So I got an information back there. Notice the fact that it's basically the part and I got an opportunity to essentially, you know, $10 is the price for it. Now, what I did is I just asked the question, what is the price of thousand of these for Addison? Now, this is much more brilliant because it understand the context when I said these means basically the part which it actually took a context on and the Addison for the customer. Well, wow, that's great because if you notice that the $10 was the price for the part, but however, Evo recommended you that it's basically $8.25. Now, I'll get back to that part anyway. 
Now, I do have an option to choose between create a code from the EY itself and suggest me create code. I just created the code. When I created the code number, I'm simply trying to convert that quotation to the order as well. So I have a quotation for probably, you know, thousand of these for $8,028. And then I essentially is basically trying to create an order. Wow. That's like, you know, in seconds, isn't it? That made your life absolutely simpler. So if you have a BPM that triggers when you create an order and uh, to convert uh, sort of, you know, all the quotation to the order, essentially you can trigger that and then it will email be sent. I was lucky enough to witness the launch of the EVA in Las Vegas during the Epic Orange site. Let me tell you how, can, how things can uh, interact if you use the tool wisely. Of course, the screenshot from the Epic Orange that basically uh, says about um, the creation of the order. So this basically talks the fact that it's created through the EVA, as you can see from the purchase order, it's EVA is there. And that's where I said the context to settings. So if you notice the pot price list, it's essentially basically, you know, $8 and 26 cents. And it used that because you've mapped that information to the customers. So getting back to my experience in Las Vegas. So this is what I saw, and it does make sense to share the experience. If basically, if you set up an alert coming from an IoT module to the EVA, EVA basically, when you try to log in, you found that there is a machine on the production line for have issues and would need to go for the maintenance. Now, EVA alerted and showed a recommendation to choose from the schedule a maintenance to plan or to ignore the alert. Now, ignoring doesn't seem to be a good idea to the person, so he basically chose between schedule maintenance. The moment you say that, Evo recommended again that there are jobs assigned on this line and, you know, where would you like to reschedule these two? You could choose other lines um, uh, that probably I did have a capacity on other lines, so I can choose the lines that I was. So simply choosing the line three have rescheduled all the jobs from uh, four to three with a simple click on the Eva. Now, the person in the shop floor is alerted that that settles the maintenance plan. Absolutely brilliant. So you have a machine that is actually connected to the IoT and IoT alerting an anomaly to the machine. EVA is getting the feed out of it and a person basically using that EVA and then EVA basically, you know, try to uh, process the data, giving you an adaptive card. That's what they call it as an adaptive card in the AI systems. And essentially that adaptive card will give you the recommendations to basically choose between the options you had. And then you can possibly, um, you know, select between what exactly you want to do. Like, for example, in that particular case, you scheduled a maintenance plan um, by rescheduling the jobs, which was essentially scheduled on that particular job line or the production line to another line. So think about the efforts that is reduced in the process. Wow. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? So when you're even talking to your customers, you do have an opportunity to understand what's the current price that you could sell or what is the current discount that you could give to them. And then you can basically create an order. And from there, that's done. It's, it's like you're placing. So your salesperson go to the marketplace and simply create an order probably within a minute or a minute and a half just to make because you're, he's actually conversating. That is absolutely really important. And I would love to do that. And I've just witnessed that. And this is from one of our cloud systems running in Middle East. Right. So coming back to the section, uh, you've seen the orders and uh, that's got created in Epic by understanding the context of the price list. That's good. Now, I'm a curious person. And I would like to ask questions and see how agent is responding, just like what we do with the Siri or Google Assistant. So what happens when you ask me your questions? I just want to mention this, it's sort of, you know, smooth. So, but notice the fact that all these agents, be it Siri or Google Assistant or Eva, learn day by day by understanding the relevance and context. Which means if you ask more relevant question, you're not only helping Eva, but also helping the ecosystem by making understand uh, the relevance, essentially. Obviously, if you still want to ask uh, weird questions, like what I've done, I can assure you that she will break your heart. She simply ignores that pattern. But isn't it amazing to know that we have a set of um, brilliant ancillary uh, add-on product and extensions that covers 
um, the spectrum of operational reports to artificial intelligence. This is why I started saying, I always excited to work with these native features on ancillary products. This gives us a broader spectrum to think how we can benefit in enhancing the experience of using Epicor. That's why I love Epicor. Right, that leads to our next topic, integrations made easier. Why would I basically choose this topic? Let's discuss about it. The process of linking together different computing systems, maybe in general, I kind of wanted to clear that point, and software applications physically or functionally to act a coordinated whole is what we simply call it as integration. System integrations involves integrating existing, often disparate systems in such a way that focuses on increase the value uh, to the customers. Example, improved product quality and performance by all the same uh, time uh, providing value to the company. Or reducing operational cost and improving response time. Of course, we all know how integration used to be painful in earlier days. But have you ever wondered how these many tools are on Epic or uh, been working seamlessly? Hmm. That's not first, it's a welcoming architecture to accommodate, or I simply call it as um, service-oriented architecture. So what is service-oriented architecture? Service-oriented architecture is a style of a software design where services are provided to the other components by application components through the communication protocol over a network. Its principles are independent of vendors and um, other uh, technologies. In service-oriented architecture, uh, a number of services communicates with each other in one or two ways through passing data through um, two or more services coordinating an activity. This is just one definition of the service-oriented architecture. However, even though there was a fully flexibility, opening up our ERP to the vendors there was a major concern around securities for at least some of you guys, isn't it? Like, I want my vendor not to look into the certain aspect of the product. For example, uh, maybe my internal price of a part. Or maybe you only wanted to consume the parts which is created in Epic Core, but you don't want them to update anything back to ERP. Sounds logical, isn't it? Do you realize that these are not at all complicated when it comes to the Epic Core. Thanks to the architecture and design, things such as RESTful services, uh, OData feeds are absolutely easy to use and eliminate the complexities of integration. And, and, and obviously the introduction to the access scope, I'm not 100% sure everybody's gone through the new features, but there is something called as access scope. On top of service and field security was an absolute win-win. Of course, there is really a big subject again, which is integration through Epic cars. But of course, feel free to speak to us in case if you're looking for an integration. We're more than happy to accommodate. Right, the next slide currently what you're looking is some of the commonly used extensions and products. I give you a brief note on how these products help you. Like Epic or Web Access, this is an extension. Epicor Web Access is the uh, tool that runs on your uh, browsers essentially as a replica of your basic ERP at the client. And it does what exactly the ERP does. Mobile Access is another platform. I have customers using the Mobile Access at this point where they you could you could deploy and a dashboard what you want to basically deploy it and you can publish it over in um, uh, a public IP where people can actually access those information back. And if you create an updatable dashboard, et cetera, they can basically send back the information to the ERP on a secure channel. Data discovery, we did talk about that. Data discovery is again an extension of Epicor, but data discovery is a data visualization platform, or I simply call it as uh, an intuitive way to understand what's actually happening in the systems. Docstar, a brilliant ECM or a content management system, we did have a session on Docstar. I say, go to the YouTube channel of Ryan Brooker and try to subscribe it. You could actually see all the webinars which we are actually being probably recording. Now, Docstar is a platform where you can use it for the content management, seamlessly integrated with Epicor. Excel Connect and Excel Broadcast. 
that is some uh, brilliant tools, which I would also want to discuss. I know for the fact that many people basically are using the Excel Connect, but I don't know if many of them are actually using the broadcast. Uh, of course, the creative reports in the Excel Connect can be even scheduled to send through the broadcast. How cool is that? On a different formats, on a different recipient addresses, through multiple channels. You have a lot of opportunity to work with the broadcast. It's th these tools, as I say, everything is a subject to discuss. Information Worker helps you to uh, integrate your Epicor with the Microsoft Office tools, where you can essentially look into, you know, um, things such as customers, CRM, etc., straightforward into Outlook or Word or Microsoft Excel, etc. Epic or collaborative, or you simply call it social enterprise. And uh, social enterprise is a platform, or collaborative in the newer terminologies, is a platform where you can uh, integrate or collaborate between the multiple employees, where you can discuss about a, a common topic, such as it's a sort of a LinkedIn or a Twitter platform, where you can discuss about a common uh, subject, such as a sale order, or probably some sort of an approval, or discuss even an ERP data. It's a brilliant tool to explore, by the way. And we've got more tools, which I essentially couldn't able to put it in here. So we've got a lot of tools in there, something like uh, automation tool for Apple Core, OData feed and RESTful services, and the list can essentially go on mobile CRMs and you know warehousing mechanisms, handheld, MES. It's definitely not a single session that's gonna cover the entire subject, but this is the richness I'm talking about. I encourage you to speak to us in case if you're interested in one or many of the products. Of course, I cannot take all the products offered on Epicor for this webinar. But as I mentioned, if you can provide your requirements, we're more than happy to suggest you the best solutions. That went smooth. I hope this helps you to understand the richness in terms of capability, what Epicor can offer. This is just an overview. I definitely hope it helped. Well, thanks, and over to you, Sri. Thank you, Nidesh. That was a wonderful session. Um, just to give you a summary, you have seen how the service-oriented architecture integrates well. Uh, the plethora of ancillary tools provided by Epicor to leverage business value and business performance and ease of doing business. So uh, we would encourage you to post your questions in the questions window. Uh, we would be glad to take these questions. So we saw plenty of tools like uh, Eva, how the EDD works, how the Excel Connect is integrated, how the uh, you know uh, uh, collaborator, social colla collaborator works. There are plenty of things that's connected with Epicor. So uh, talk to our uh, team. We would be able to assist you. You can uh, write to info uh, at rhinix.com and you have questions, you can post in this window and we would be glad. We do have some questions, so I can take these questions and probably uh, we can uh, discuss this. Uh, uh, there is a question from uh, Flynn. Thank you, Flynn, for asking this. Uh, can we create histogram sort of charts via EDD? Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, I can take that question. Yes, you certainly can. Uh, the, uh, what was the name again? It was Flynn. Flynn. Oh, Flynn, yeah. thank you so much for asking yeah. the question. Thanks for the um, um, listening to our webinars. Um, so yes, you certainly can create the histograms and data disk reviews. Uh, it has more charts like a bubble charts and there are uh, bars and uh, there are multiple opportunities when you go to the Epicor data disk reviews and exploration. So uh, it do provides a lot of options. Now they have a new widget that has uh, been arrived called as core cards. Uh, so every time when Epicor releases a build, um, EDD is evolving into an uh, excellent platform for you to basically visualize these items. So yes, the answer is yes, you can create a histograms. Thank you, Nitesh. We have one more. Um, EDD uses standard Epicor uh, securities in its layout. Is it so? That's a question from Flint again. All right. Uh, okay. Um, yes. Uh, that is actually a good question though. Um, so when you talk about the EDDs, uh, all these tools, whatever I have been trying to discuss on today, this is a fair point to say the fact that everything uses uh, business objects. So uh, when it basically does, it just has to go through the security um, protocols which are defined inside the systems. On this specific case, you do have an opportunity to um, make the people um, put a security even to the interior layout or you can even put a security even to the each and every widgets in a layout 
uh, if you're talking about an EDD dashboard so that it can be easily accessible to the system? So the answer is obviously yes. Uh, it do uses the standard F4 securities. You can protect it through the business uh, activity query security or even layout has a security separately. So the answer is yes. Uh, we have another interesting question from Kaushik. Um, you mentioned that APR complements Docstar. Does APR have ability to attach documents directly to Docstar without logging in directly to Logstar? Yes. Um, so that is a brilliant question again. So essentially, Docstar, an APR complements Docstar, and I just mentioned that in my slide as well. Uh, you do have an opportunity to attach directly to the Docstar through the APR. So if you essentially create um, a workflow that and accommodate attaching to the Docstar platform, you don't have to log into the Docstar at all. So from the app or it seamlessly go and just attach back into the Docstar. So it is absolutely uh, possible. There's one more interesting question from Kaushik. Thank you, Kaushik, for asking that. APR seems to be a tool that we're looking for. How complicated is it to design the workflows with an APR? Uh, or, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so it is not complicated, at least I would say, because it's a, it's a communication foundation. It's just like, just like your BPM framework. Uh, so it is absolutely possible for a um, person who has got a knowledge and I'll, you can make it complicated, I would say. Like you could build a complicated workflows that can essentially look into the multiple places that and, and understand to send to whom and that sort of thing. So you do have an opportunity to design a complicated workflow, uh, but for the simple workflows, I think it's a straightforward mechanism. Um, next question is from um, Mr. Durai. Epicor yeah. and IoT seems to be interesting. How complicated is it to put this into an action? Right, um, of course the terminologies are bigger. Uh, but I would say it's not really complicated because um, you essentially are looking into an IoT hub and then we we have to integrate our devices into it. So there is a hardware involved and there is obviously everybody knows the fact. So there is a hardware involved into it and there is, you know, uh, that you needed to integrate between those two things. And then configuring this information back to the Epicor is not complicated, I would say. So uh, I, 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 I witnessed this particular thing when I was doing my labs and things uh, on, on my lab VMs, et cetera. So really not complicated in terms of integrating the IoT to Epicor. Only there are some hardware involved. We have one more question from Kaushik. Uh, um, we are excited to see Eva. Um, can you let us know whether Eva uses uh, standard business objects to interact with Epicor? All right, uh, yes, we do. Uh, because as I was mentioned in between again on one of the slides that um, if you are basically scheduling a maintenance plan, uh, Eva it didn't recommend essentially to do the maintenance plan because it also basically created a maintenance plan, which means it's actually using the uh, standard business object. So if you trigger an email after the maintenance plan is done or scheduled uh, through your BPM framework, yes. It can seamlessly integrate. So, which means Eva do uses the business objects. Yeah, we do have a question from Danya. Um, how complicated is it to use uh, things like O data with Epicor? We uh, seem to right. understand it is possible from integrations are made easier in this. Yes, um, O data is not at all complicated. In fact, it do complements even the Excel Connect as a tool nowadays. So you do have an opportunity to essentially um, uh, take that, uh, you know, uh, through a slide, and then you can basically um, take that information backwards into the Excel, normal Excel sheets as a platform. So a JSON is split and parsed and backwards to your uh, Excel. So it's, it's a straightforward four to five steps which you need to follow up. And that way we are done with the OData task well. So not complicated again, and it's very easy. And there's a um, meaningful web services uh, introduction which Epicor has been given. There is one last question here. Um, I can take this question, but it's quite interesting. How complicated, um, you can pitch them and definitely from a commercial angle, I can tell them or from yeah. a utility angle, technically you can talk about it. How complicated is it to install and configure these tools and uh, do RIC, Ryan Bruka, uh, training 
um, provide trainings on these as well? That's a question from Danya as well. Uh, from the setting up part, I will answer, and later on you can answer the training part. Uh, yeah, do both, however. So the setting up part is something that we generally do. So we do have a dedicated team doing this particular activities for a lot of customers, um, which I've done for a lot of customers. Uh, so it, it do has to have a bit of experience in terms of the setting up of the tools, uh, but obviously it is not complicated essentially. So. Um, um, maybe it's it's easy for you to set up, uh, but you need to also know how to test and uh, verify everything is in line with the uh, what you have been tested. So, um, in terms of installation configuration, it's not complicated, um, but it requires an essential amount of testing potential to make sure everything is in line. And I'll over to you. Uh, just to provide a very brief uh, idea on how they really work from a business side. Pictorially, the business can represent the statement or a business problem, and they can see the requirement in a pictorial manner. The underlying software would be automatically made available for them by the tool in conjunction with Epicor. So the training that's provided along with the tools that we're discussing are not more than a day or two. And if you look at a larger handholding, Put together four to five tools are a matter of empowering the end users within a week's time so that uh, they get the essentials on their hand and from there on they should be able to uh, take it forward. Occasionally you probably get stuck here and there and you know over a call seven things can be asked and clarified that's how the tools are made user friendly. So most of the tools they provide you a visual representation of problem statement from the business side the rest of the technicalities taken care of by the underlying tool and the Epicor as a platform takes care of the overall functioning. So as explained by Nitish initially, the setup is the key. Once that is done, you have the wings and you can take off and it's up to you. So that's the last question of the day. We do not have any questions. So I can uh, wait for a couple of minutes. If any members from the attendees, if you can post, we would be glad to take them. Um, you are always encouraged to send your um, question to um, marketing at rhinix.com or info at rhinix.com. There are plenty of uh, email IDs where you can reach out to us. We would be glad to pick this. Or you can give us a call. The numbers are also given here for the Middle East uh, um, you know, enthusiasts on the Epicor tools. Pick up these numbers and you know, give a shout. We would be more than happy to give you um, clarity on what exactly is needed on the end studies and overall if we go as a platform you want to take it forward So thank you so much. The last question for the day, I think we answered and uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Stay safe and uh, uh, take care of yourself. We would be conducting more webinars to provide you better insights on Epicor ancillaries to leverage better value on the overall platform and the tools associated. Thank you so much. Have a good evening and stay safe. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, guys. Cheers. Hi.